There are a couple times of the year when we feel a major sense of urgency to get our food planted in the ground, and early spring is one of those times. The reason for that being that where we live, if we don't get things planted at the right time in early spring, we won't get a harvest at all. So it's not because we have a short growing season, it's because our summers get super hot. So crops like potatoes, onions, and peas if we wait too long, we won't get a harvest at all or the harvest will yield a lot less. So it's a really important to get everything in the ground on time. So this spring season, we are about two weeks behind on just about everything. And I am super nervous about it because as most of you guys know, we grow all of our own vegetables. We don't purchase any at the grocery store. So if these major crops for us, like the potatoes, the onions, the peas, if those don't produce, we just won't have any this year and we'll have to make up for it some other way. So we are gonna hustle as much as our usual daily life will allow and get these crops into the ground and all the family is gonna pitch in so that we can do it as quickly as possible. When we are planting potatoes, we make sure that we plant enough that we have some for eating and then some that we can save for seed. So all of the potatoes that we are planting here are ones that we had saved for seed with some exceptions. So I, I set aside any that I harvest the year before that were not properly covered and had some green on them. I, I harvest those for seed and I put them in a separate basket and they have these nice strong green shoots on them. And these ones with the longer white shoots, those were actually the ones that were for our eating. So I didn't set aside enough of the one kind. So I'm combining both of these potatoes. They're actually just one variety, but I'm mentioning all this because of the way that they were stored and how one is better for uh, replanting and the other is not, but we just didn't have enough. So I planted them both. I've done this before. It doesn't make a huge difference, actually. I, I've never really tested it, but when we get the harvest at the end, it's always pretty much the same. So I'm guessing that it doesn't make that big of a difference. <laughs> this variety of potatoes is Kennebec, and we have been planting these for the last three years. I never had success with having enough potatoes until I started to plant organic seed. It was very expensive to purchase, but ever since I bought these every year thereafter, I have not had to buy it again, so it was a worthwhile expense. I was checking under the burlap where I planted the carrots. There are some that are sprouting, and so I'm going to take this burlap off because that was the whole purpose, just to get them to sprout, and also there are a lot of pill bugs under this burlap which normally just eat decaying matter but when you have a wet area like this and you have a lot of pill bugs they can come across and eat seedlings too so i'm making sure i get this burlap off right away here when i planted these carrots i was a little bit concerned that they would not germinate well just because the compost was not fully broken down so I put down a lot of carrot seeds down the rows and when I took off the burlap I saw that they had germinated so well. Maybe a little bit too well because I put down so many seeds so I'll probably have to go back and thin them but I would rather have that problem than have not enough pop up. So I was very happy with how it turned out with the burlap. I usually use burlap to cover the carrot seeds in the spring. And when we get to summer, instead of using burlap to germinate carrot seeds, I will use silage tarp with the white side up. It really helps to keep the heat off there and helps the seeds to germinate better. Oh, that's good. That's probably good. And then okay. we need. We have been growing lemon trees in pots for a couple of years because we are not in a warm enough growing zone that we can leave them outside all year. So they go outside in the summer and then I bring them in in the winter. So a couple of years ago, I accidentally left my lemon trees outside in a very hard frost and they got severely damaged. A couple of them died, but one of them survived. It was this one, and the rest of the branches died back, and then it started to grow new shoots. So I was excited about that. And so for the other ones that died, I replaced those. I bought some new ones. 
every winter I take these plants inside and I am confessing something to you guys. And that is that I am terrible at taking care of plants when they're inside my house. Some of these plants are not in great shape. So we potted them up. We added some more compost, some more uh, soil. We added some prebiotic, soil prebiotic to this and a little bit of fertilizer. So they're all set happy. They're in a warm place. So hopefully they will just shoot up in growth from here on out. That same day, I started to work on another garden task that I needed to get done. And that was getting my shelling peas planted. But to do that, I had a job to do beforehand. And that was to get this entire garden bed all weeded and prepped and ready to go. Go with me. I'm getting tired. This is kind of hard to do with one hand. I need your pouch. It's April 2nd and I cannot believe it, but I am actually harvesting strawberries from inside my tunnel today. I have one set of strawberries in here and I have an identical set that I got from the same source, planted the same time outside and the ones outside are not even close yet. I'm guessing I probably have about another four or six weeks before I pick my first. With these ones in here, I got my first strawberry on March 17th and it looks like I'm gonna be picking quite a few from here today. I am weighing how many I get because I wanna compare inside here to outside there, the yields as well, to see if there's any difference in yields. This is what I got from today's harvest. There's definitely more here, but I'm waiting until they're super red just because I can. And this is a home garden and I can wait until they're in perfect condition before I harvest all the way. One little problem that I've been dealing with on the strawberries is, I thought it was slugs at first, but it's actually pill bugs chewing on these. A lot of times when you look online, it'll say, no, it's not pill bugs, it's slugs, and you're just not seeing them. I have checked night and day and all at all hours, and I see zero slugs on these strawberries. I really think it is the pill bugs, and I've had this problem in another garden. I don't care what they say online. I think they're chomping my strawberries, because normally pill bugs would just eat like decaying organic matter. Um, I think they're actually eating these, and part of the problem is I have this paper down where the strawberries are so they love to like gather underneath that. The other thing is I was just getting my carrots to germinate so I had watered from above in here so there was a lot of moisture and they were gathering because of that. So an option is I could just sprinkle some diatomaceous earth here and that would probably take care of it but I'm actually gonna wait it out. That's part of my normal pest management strategy is having a little bit of patience because a lot of times those problems will take care of themselves. I'm not selling these strawberries, so it's not like I have a big loss yet. If I was losing a lot of strawberries, I probably would just put that diatomaceous earth on there. But the diatomaceous earth is food grade and it's edible and stuff. So I don't, I don't have a problem putting it on from that perspective. It's just that it can have effects on more than just pill bugs. And so I like to wait just to um, make sure that I'm not affecting other bugs as well. Well, I think my, I think my weighing isn't gonna be quite accurate because I have somebody picking these in advance. Hey, if you're gonna pick it, you might as well eat it. My sister Amy and her family were here over the last couple of days and Amy came out and helped me to get a garden bed all prepped and ready for peas. We planted those. It had rained all day the day prior to us going outside and doing this, so it was not an ideal time to prep this bed for planting because really you're not supposed to work the soil when it is wet like this. But we were not um, tilling or going in super deep. We were just kind of doing a surface hoeing and so it worked just fine. We planted the seeds with the Earthway Cedar. This was Amy's first time ever using the Earthway or any cedar at all, and she really liked how fast it was compared to planting by hand. It really saves a ton of time. Today I was going to put some compost down on top of the peas 
just to keep them fully covered and to keep other weed seeds from popping up. But I came out here and I changed my mind. The row next to the peas has a lot of weeds and I want to make sure I get those out of here before I put the compost on because I don't want any weed seeds flying from one row to the other. So especially the dandelions are out right now. So I'm going to get all of that removed from that row and the row next to it and then we'll put the compost on after that. After we got that adjacent row all cleaned up and the weeds out of there, we went ahead and started to put down some compost on top of where we had planted the peas. We have been using this wood frame that we built to lay down the compost on the garden beds to keep everything neat and tidy. And I didn't really have to use it here, but I really love how it delineates where the garden beds are. So we just laid down about an inch and a half of compost over top of the peas instead of a full three and a half inches, which is how high this frame is. So just halfway up that so that the peas still could sprout up over the top. The other thing that we worked on this day is we wanted to cover the potatoes with some compost. At this point, <laughs> our compost pile is extremely low, so we were pretty much using up the last of the compost we had to cover the potatoes. I still haven't covered them all the way. We need to go and get some more compost. We had family in town, and then we went to go see the eclipse, and I'm feeling a little bit behind on some of my seeds starting. So I'm getting started on some of my tomatoes today, which are a big one for me, and I usually don't start them until about a month before our average last frost in the tunnel. I'm about two weeks late for that, but it's okay. We have a long season, so I do have a little bit of wiggle room. Yay! Uh, last night I made up seven soil block trays and then it was time for me to go make dinner so I didn't actually even seed anything so this morning we're gonna finish this up and sow some tomatoes in these trays. He's picking his own food already. <laughs> He's such a mess. He's gonna eat all those. Yeah, he will. <laughs> now he knows. Like, go for the red things. Prior to this growing season, we had a very small area to start all of our seeds for our large garden. And one thing that I really didn't realize or recognize was how much uh, a bigger area would benefit us and how much time that would actually save. So it does take quite a bit more time to start all these seedlings and then transplant them. But because I am not direct sowing, I am weeding a lot less. And so it's saving me time in that regard. So there, pull it out. Some's gonna fall, it's still pretty tough. Here we are on the final home stretch of the crops that we plant in the spring that are really important to get in the ground. So we are planting our bulb onions. I started these from seed back in February. Honestly, these ones, I'm not two weeks behind. I'm a month behind in what I normally plant. But we wanted to wait until they got a little bit bigger this time than when we usually put them in the ground. The reason for that being we wanted to do less weeding than last year. And when we put them in the ground so early and direct sow them, we are always dealing with more weeds. So we figured if we let them in the seed trays a little bit longer, some of these I, I actually potted up, but not all of them. I left them in longer, they were able to get bigger, and I'm just really hoping that they are able to put on the same amount of growth that they usually do. Another thing that we are doing different this year is we are using a drill to make the hole to plant the onion in. And we used this method for our garlic last fall and it worked amazing. I wish we had figured this out sooner. I'm planting these pretty shallow because I wanna put some compost on the top of them. 
and we are out of compost right now, as I mentioned, so we need to go and get some. We do not make enough for our whole garden, so we picked that up at a place that's semi-local. It's actually about an hour and a half away, but they sell organic compost, and it's pretty much the best stuff around us that I've found. We have to wait until a weekend, or Cam takes a day off of work so that we can go and get that so it's kind of a a big ordeal but once we get it we'll be all set for a little while so for these bulb onions i like to do three rows across on a 30 inch bed and then for the spacing in between each of the onions is i think it's six inches and then the spacing between each of the rows is 10 inches i've done it this way for a lot of years and we always have good results from it we got it all done. All of the spring crops that I needed to get in the ground are now planted with the exception of, I still have a few more onions to plant, but the potatoes are in. We've got snap peas, snow peas, shelling peas, and all of the bulb onions are planted now. So I can breathe a big sigh of relief and I just feel so much better. So we're gonna hope and pray that we get a nice cool spring and summer and we get a good harvest this year all the same.